is coming through is going to invigorate you because I have some amazing panelists who are so ready and eager and available to just address the very thing that you're here for. So our time is going very swiftly and I know you all have very important things to do. So let me just have a little bit of an, um, a brief about what our session is all about today. The tourism sector in Zanzibar, we all know, is growing exponentially. We also know that the tourism sector is very much part of the Zanzibar government agenda in terms of the trajectory of where the economy is going. The speakers before us have touched on some very important points on where tourism is going, and we don't need to belabor those other points. But also joining us, on, not on this panel, but on this session, is the Deputy PS for the Ministry of Tourism and Heritage here in Zanzibar, and that is Honorable Amina Amir Issa. She will also come and give us remarks from a government's perspective. So for all the investors and potential investors who are here this afternoon, let us give a warm welcome to Honorable PS, Deputy PS Amina. Please come and give us your remarks this afternoon. And immediately, yes, immediately after her remarks, she has other engagements, so she will have to leave, but we will stay on with the panelists. Now, kabla hatuja kukaribisha, mweshimiwa, let me call and introduce the panelists who are going to join us this afternoon. First one on here, we have Miss Victoria Kamazima. She's a lawyer from CC Consultants, based right here in Zanzibar. Victoria, please come and join me here right now, if you could take a seat right there, thank you. Right here, really. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. And then also joining us, we have Mr. Paolo Rosso, who is the vice president of Plan Hotel Group of Companies. If you are not clapping, there's a reason. What is this? Give him a clap, please. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. <laughs> Can you do one of those? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And so, and also joining us, or rather was supposed to join us, if you're looking at the program, I'm sure you will see that we were going to have uh, Mr. Sebastian Dietzelf of, he's a CEO and owner of CPS, but he has other engagements this afternoon, so he won't be joining us, but he will be joining us tomorrow. So please, if you're here to, to listen to his views, you haven't missed out, he'll still be joining us tomorrow. But... All is not lost. We have someone else who's joining this panel, and that is the vibrant Honorable Taufik Vigor. He's a chairman of Vigor Group of Companies and also a member of Parliament. Let us give them a big hand of applause. Thank you very much. <laughs> See the big smile on his face? It's because he didn't know he was going to be on this panel. He didn't know... He Thank you. He didn't know he was going to be on this panel, but he graciously accepted to sit in and share his pearls of wisdom with us. So again, let's give him a hand of applause. Thank you very much. And so last but not least, before we continue with our session, I'd like to call upon you, Honorable Deputy PS, Amina Amir Issa. Please. Thank you very much. And for you, if it's okay, Mwashimiwa, you can speak from the podium over there. Thank you very much. Sawa, sawa. Thank you. Distinguished delegates, invited guests, panel discussants, ladies and gentlemen, Good afternoon and assalamu alaikum. First and foremost, I would like to thank God the Almighty for giving me strength to stand before you today to say a few words on this occasion. I would also like to thank the organizers of this forum for granting me the opportunity to speak before you the very important stakeholders for the development of tourism sector in particular and the development of our country in general. Ladies and gentlemen, as we all know, 
Tourism is a fast growing industry in Zanzibar and is a key to a country's economy by providing over 29.2% of the GDP and over 80% of foreign earnings. The number of tourists is growing from year to year in Zanzibar where needs arise for the expansion of infrastructure and tourist products and real estate developers. Tourism is a source of direct employment to a number of people in the transport, traveling, and hotel industry where it produced over 44,000 direct employment and over 60,000 60, indirect employment in Zanzibar as for now. But there are more rooms to increase these figures. Ladies and gentlemen, Africa and Zanzibar have immense opportunities to grow their market shares of tourism as they have a large number of attractions, including coastlines, rich culture, history and traditions, adventure, safari, stunning landscapes, crazes, and so much more. Moreover, there are attractive investment opportunities for tourist resort developments, and generally facilities, and for targeting untapped tourism niches. Ladies and gentlemen, real estate sector is very important for the improvement of tourism sector in Zanzibar because it expands the accommodation sector in tourism and other investment areas. Mainly, the real estate investors abide with the provided laws of the land on operating their real estate, including paying taxes and other obligatory actions, which including the corporate social responsibilities. While giant real estate firms are abiding with the laws and regulations, there is still a challenge to, small, to smaller real estates like BNB and those providing services using online platform like booking.com. Ladies and gentlemen, the revolutionary government of Zanzibar has taken a number of initiatives to provide more conducive environments to the tourism sector. For instance, inf improvement of infrastructures such as roads, airport, and the provision of better water supply and electricity. A new port at Mangapwani will be conducive for cruise tourism. Billions of shillings have been set out to rehabilitate the historical sites of Unguja and Pemba, and I believe this forum will spice the engagement of more stakeholders in tourism sectors. Ladies and gentlemen, I was informed that the forum will discuss the trade and investment opportunities in Zanzibar's tourism and real estate sector. The session will discuss solution to the challenge of developing intra-African tourism. This is a good initiative. The government of Zanzibar is highly appreciating and supporting these efforts because they align with its development plan and uh, development vision 2050. The Zanzibar Trade Investment Forum 2022 with its theme on promoting sustainable trade investment under the African Continental Free Trade Agreement will make Zanzibar a more prominent place for trade, tourism, and real estate development. With these few remarks, I have the honor to officially announce the opening of the forum. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Honorable Deputy Pierce. And as she leaves, as I said earlier, 
She will not be remaining to join us on this panel discussion because of other engagements. So we will proceed with my very vibrant panelists here today. So just a little bit of perspective before we get started. Session here. <laughs> we've heard from uh, speakers who spoke earlier today, and we've heard remarks from the Honorable Second Vice President um, of Zanzibar that Zanzibar is ready, Zanzibar is willing, and Zanzibar is open for trade and for investment. And that is very good news for all of those who are here today, particularly looking to look for those opportunities. Now, this echoes the political will that we have continuously heard from both our presidents, Her Excellency Honorable Samir Suluhu Hassan, and also His Excellency President Hussein Ali Mwini. We have, they have all spoken that tourism is indeed the cornerstone for Zanzibar and indeed Tanzania. Now, tourism is one of the key sectors that the government of Zanzibar is uh, focusing on for economic growth. And the government is keen to attract investors and partners, and that is why we're all here today. We'd like to thank Avrexim Bank and the other organizers, Zipa, for bringing this forum together. You may look around and ask yourself, how come there are not so many people in the room? Those are the ones who don't know that these investment opportunities exist. Those are the ones who, by the time the rest of us are moving forward, they will wonder how come I didn't know, but that's because they were not here. So if you're here, just know you are not wasting your time. You're at the right place at the right time. And real estate opportunities are endless here in Zanzibar. And, across, and this spans across residential areas, industrial areas, and also the commercial areas. And it's not only growing vastly amongst the international investors, but also for local investors. If you ask investors within the mainland, they will all tell you that they're all looking to invest in real estate right here in Zanzibar. So we all understand that this is a very fast growing opportunity. And our panelists here are gonna to speak to us more about that today. So without much further ado, um, let me start to the, the first question to you, Paolo, okay? We know that uh, trade and investment opportunities in Zanzibar's tourism and real estate sector are growing. And we're here to discuss the solutions to help it grow further and to just, you know, explore the various opportunities that exist. You, as you're coming in from one of the major, major investors in the hospitality industries from Plan Hotel, you've got several properties spanning around the island and not just Zanzibar, but probably across Africa as well. So you're well versed in this conversation. I'd like to ask you this, Paolo, what is the biggest attraction for investors looking to invest in Zanzibar's tourism sector? I'm sure there's plenty, but because of our time, just uh, let's go straight yes, into the I most be, important. Yes, I will be very quick. Mm -hmm. the, the, there is a huge, huge attraction in Zanzibar because the Zanzibar is the attraction them herself. Zanzibar is attraction. Why is attractive? Because of the beautiful sea, the beautiful beaches, and the fantastic populations. Okay, which is welcoming all the all the all the guests continuously. It has been uh, welcoming them uh, forever, I would say. So. Zanzibar is the attraction, and anybody who's got any uh, idea and any idea of investment in tourism, he understands that these three elements are fundamental for hospitality, mm -hmm. really fundamental. So here they are natural. In other destinations, probably you have to either they have to create the beach, or you have to create the, 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 the kindness in the people, or you have to create other, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, you have to create these three basic uh, elements. Mm -hmm. So, to me, I mean, it's no doubt, okay, uh, we, our company invested in the first time in 1994. We are the second uh, investors here in Zanzibar in resort. And since 1994, we are still here. We're investing, we continue, we believe. So, a reason is, for sure is there. Eh? And that's why you're still here, isn't it? Absolutely. That's why I'm also <laughs> sitting here, okay, to... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And let me ask you also, Honorable Taufik, why do you think, what is so interesting, what is so attractive about Zanzibar in terms of investing, particularly also in the real estate sector? I will go with uh, Paolo for sure. 
Uh, first of all, it's a culture, tradition. I think uh, we are so rich in history. Uh, you go to Maldives, you are just in a very beautiful uh, resort, mm -hmm. but outside your room, you have nothing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you come to Zanzibar, you have spices, you have wildlife, you have culture, you have history, and uh, the people are very authentic. And in hours flight, you are in the mighty Serengeti or Kilimanjaro. I don't think any other destination or island can give you that. Absolutely. So, so you get yeah, two in is. one. Once you come to Zanzibar, you get everything. Whilst it, and for those of you who, of whom it's your first time to come to Zanzibar, you've just heard there is more happening in Zanzibar beyond where we are here right now. Victoria, what do you think? Is you live here, so you're a resident of Zanzibar. What is so attractive about coming into Zanzibar and investing in Zanzibar? Let's hear your views. Although one you're alone. one mm -hmm. second, I'm offended. You know, I'm born in Zanzibar. <laughs> <laughs> just carry on. Just a joke. <laughs> And we have someone who's born and bred in Zanzibar. He's, and that's why he told us it's authentic, the culture. Yeah. <laughs> go on, Victoria. I do live in Zanzibar. And, uh, Your mic is off. To go with Honorable Tao Sik. Your mic is um, off. To go with what um, Honorable Tao Sik has just said. I've been in Zanzibar now. I'm marking my 15th year. Yeah. So maybe the proper question to me would be what made me stay mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. what makes other tourists yeah. stay. Yeah. Because it's, it's not just about coming, investing, it's to make sure that you, are, uh, you have incentives to make you come back. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that a lot through the clients that I'm having. They mm -hmm. have loyal customers and now people are also investing in real estate. Right. It all goes to the, Apart from the beautiful things that have been said, I would uh, mark on the, um, the local community itself. Okay. You get here, you're an investor, mm -hmm. you, you, you interact with the community, right, yeah. everything goes smoothly mm -hmm. compared to some other destinations that I, 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 I have witnessed. So yeah. for me, it's the tranquility that comes with mm -hmm. the interactions that you're having with the local community, mm -hmm. with... Um, Basically that, okay. because if there is no tranquility in that, then you'll just come and lock yourself in a, 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 a high-end hotel and then mm -hmm. go. But it's the interaction that really, yeah. really. I like the example that Honorable Taufik just gave us. You can go to the Maldives and all you're going to do is enjoy your amazing um, hotel suite. And once you get out, it's water and nothing much else to do, which is not the case in Zanzibar. So let us go straight on to the next question. And I'll, and I'll direct that to you, Honorable. Um, you are a very successful investor right here in Zanzibar, and real estate is one of the sectors that you they saw, don't <laughs> that you are knowledgeable on. So, what are the investment opportunities in Zanzibar, particularly in the real estate sector? Let's just jump on that one. And uh, our real estate is uh, extremely diversified, as uh, you know that um, as an island. Uh, we depend on tourism, there's no doubt about that, but uh, the hotel itself is a real estate, exactly. first of all. So I think most of the people, they have their mindset that, okay, I'm going to get money through the rooms, that is your daily remuneration, fair enough, but the property itself, Paolo, I stand to be wrong, uh, the value of what you've built, any of your hotel, I think at, at this hour is already at least five times higher. Uh, I don't want to know about the Rui, but uh, yeah. No, you're, you're very right. Okay, because uh, you're talking about real estate now, because after the hotels have done <laughs> such a development. And there is a, requi is a requirement Hello. also. Can I ask you to use this mic? I Sorry. think this one, maybe that mic is not enough. Yeah. And, and the, because it's a requirement of the clientele to have a diversified market. Okay, the hotel or hotel room, hotel, but the people now they want the real estate houses because they feel more confident about the destination, they feel at home, yeah. and which is hospitality is exactly that one. And uh, since uh, COVID, as you know, people they like to have uh, their own space, all places, and uh, I, th I think the luxury market or yeah. niche market has really come over. Mm -hmm. In the time of COVID, I believe we were so flooded that even uh, people were starting uh, renting the uh, normal uh, uh, rental houses. Eh? The Airbnb and Booking.com, it was just a crazy market that uh, everyone started renting their own houses. Uh, till the government now, they came to realize that they've lost so much of taxation and try to see now how they can integrate with those, uh, with those systems. Yeah. But uh, end of the day, what I believe, Zanzibar own real estate mm -hmm. is the only destination at this hour, I, I believe, mm -hmm. 
especially in Africa, that can give you double-digit returns. Wow. Double-digit returns, that is, can give you only in Zanzibar. I hope you're underlining that. And also, once you have built it, also, in each particular year, the, uh, the inflation of that particular property also is in double-digit. Wow. So your return is double-digit, but the value of the property also in double-digit. I don't believe any destination now in this globe can wow. give you that. Wow, that is, ex that is extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary. So double digit on your investments, yeah. double digit on the value of your investment, so it's a win-win. And everyone knows, mm -hmm. if anywhere there's a peace, no one beats Zanzibar mm -hmm. on security. <laughs> so, hallelujah. So that's another... <laughs> so that's another reason why Zanzibar is unique. You've got the full package, including the tranquility that Victoria was speaking about and the peace that comes along with the people of Zanzibar. And you know what, let me just add on to that. Just a little bit down the road, there's a really nice place that sells authentic pilau and, and, and biryani. For those of you who don't know that, I love that place. It's the only place that I know. Every time I come to Zanzibar, I'm there. And I'm thinking, hmm, the Spanish people have paella, but we have this pilau. Somebody needs to monetize pilau, but then again, story for another day. Okay, so <laughs> if we, you know, this session we agreed that it's going to be a discussion. So this is yes. why my panelists yes, yes, are like Yes, yes, because this. Of, you know, after we've been hearing also about uh, the blue, blue the economy, blue economy. Or whatever, it's nice. They are talking because we created the tourism. Now we can go into the blue economy, and they find out, oh, the tourism is around the blue ocean, of course, yeah. because if there was no be beautiful ocean, a beautiful island, whatever, mm -hmm. is going to be difficult. Of course, it's the blue economy is an extension of that one. And that one is a challenge that we have as investors now is to do the step forward, you know, to be more eco-friendly. All our structure, they have to be more, more eco-friendly, look after the water, the, 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 the discharge, and the, the ocean, okay? The ocean is correct, but we are what they say, but we also have to be afraid that they don't do uh, seaweed plantation in front of the hotel, because otherwise it will be a problem, okay? Right. So everything has to be extremely highly organized. Exactly. I yeah. don't know what you think. Uh, on <laughs> I totally conquer, but the first at least point we can put in you know, a beautiful hotel. Come on, they have to yeah. say. The hotels are beautiful in Zanzibar. Uh, no, but uh, to be honest, I think uh, through Zipa, and uh, sectors organized by the government, I will say, because a uh, uh, couple of these uh, meetings uh, we do uh, get invited, and uh, there's a very good strategy mm -hmm. of uh, how, first of all, we are going down on our water resources, mm -hmm. but uh, there are very good uh, mechanism mm -hmm. of to ensure that Zanzibarian, we are not going drought on water, right. but uh, also regarding the uh, sanitation mm -hmm. to make sure that, okay, the waste and everything are well con uh, contained, they are not uh, proper contamination, yeah. mm -hmm. and not having cholera outbursts all, mm -hmm. uh, as previous. So the current government is really doing quite a lot, right. and ecotourism mm -hmm. is in their quite mind. Right. So it's, uh, it's centralized that to make sure that there's a balancing right. between the nature, between the people, mm -hmm. and that is all about how we can promote real estate. Right, right. Because these days people they don't want to go in, in a way mm -hmm. or invest in a home that end of the day you don't have a proper utilities, right. you don't have a proper surrounding. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe uh, the government, they are in a verge on that. They are really working day and night to make sure that things are overcome. Uh, I stand to be corrected, Paolo, when you came 20 years or 25 years ago, not the Zanzibar we know now. Yeah. At that time, things, there things was a guy getting your hotel, it yeah. was a milestone. <laughs> eh? oh, come on, Paolo, you know, before, it was sorry, incredible. Paolo, he's touching on an important point which I want you to continue on and also bring Victoria into the conversation. With every opportunity, challenges must come on board. There are no opportunities that don't have challenges. So let's just be realistic on that one. So Victoria, what do you think, uh, you know, the challenges that will face any investor looking to invest into the Zanzibar's real estate? You're bringing your voice as a lawyer from a legal perspective. I'm sure there are many legal challenges on that one. Talk to us about that. Um, I believe um, a clear, stable, predictable, regulatory framework would assist, would cut across in, the, in facilitating mm. the investment in any sector. Okay. So that has been the challenge, at least for um, the last years. 
um, lack of um, clear procedures to be followed, lack of... Um, um, so, so these are from the government's yeah. side. They, they're there, they're, they're just not clear. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The only... Uh, um, uh, at the moment, the government is uh, now trying to do all the regulatory reforms mm -hmm. to curb these challenges. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm very excited. Right, because they're yeah. trying to remove the, bu the, bureaucracy, uh, mm -hmm. the bureaucracy that came with the procedures right. and everything else. So they are really undertaking the reforms. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested to see how the reforms will come about. Those reforms should take into consideration the practice that has so far been there. Mm -hmm. the, the, the delays, the lack of clarity. Um, one of the questions that was raised earlier, if a foreigner are in a position to own land, what does it really mean? But it's just, all is just a matter of interpretation. But if the laws are very clear, then there is no need to um, uh, get lost in translation okay. on what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. But that also goes hand in hand once the reforms have been done, as far as I'm concerned, there's also the, the, the issue of access to the um, the regulations themselves and the procedure, accessibility of it. So the, the, the fact of um, going digital, for me, um, it, it's very important. It will ease um, the way you find information uh, as far as the regulations and um, um, the requirements are concerned. Um, so even the initiatives that are being done right now with the tech um, technology um, promoting investment in technology so as to get these platforms to right. get, um, to make things easier. <laughs> yes, to make things easier. And seamless, yes. Yeah. And I think with every, with every regulation and with every policy, in order to attract the investors and in order to keep them as Paolo has been kept all this long, we, uh, the investors also need to see some kind of incentives going on. Yeah. Can you talk to us, Paolo, about the incentives that you think the government of Zanzibar could, could add? There's probably on, there's some incentives there already, but there, are there any incentives that you can think of that the government can introduce so as to attract more investors in the sector or retain the ones that are already here? And, and you can have a second go at answering that question, Honorable Tafik. Uh, yes, uh, the incentives are pretty good already, very well established, uh, uh, of easy access. Uh, recently, in the last two years, they've even been improved in the sense that you can access them quite easily and, and you, you should not have any problem. Okay, the, for me, the only things that we should really, we, the, there are two things for me that we should change in, uh, not change, improve, because one, it doesn't exist. Okay. Uh, at the moment, in every company, we do first marketing, then there is the establishment of things, and then there is a support of what is already been done. Okay. Now we have we have we have been doing very well the marketing in order to attract investment and whatever we done. The support is there. Okay, and it works uh, already 80 percent uh, well. What is missing is the support of the of the people who already invested. Okay, those ones are not anymore considered investors. Okay, so it's going to be difficult for them. Okay, to have. Uh, to maintain their rights. Right, okay, yeah. so yeah. I would like to see in the government also this uh, this uh, uh, movement, this uh, attention. Okay, because for people that have invested 25 years ago, maybe now it's time to invest again. Okay, and if you invest again, you already got the incentive 25 years ago. I'm saying, for example, mm -hmm. so you're not entitled. Okay, so sometimes it's better than you, I, I, do, I have to do a new property. I mean, this is, these are the little uh, details, okay, that we as an hotel association now, being formed recently, we would like to help the government to completely see the full, the full picture, okay, of what it is new, coming new, and then established. Okay, and what are your views? Thank you very much for that, Paolo. Uh, what are your views? I will go with the... Uh, uh, the boss speakers, I think uh, there, there is something which is missing, uh, an institution or mechanism of a system that everyone knows. Because now before, uh, real estate we never used to take it as a commodity. Uh, it was asked for a livelihood. It is 
once you have your home, you just want to give your, a gift to the kids. That is how it works. So even if you go on taxation, there's a withholding tax, almost of 10%. While Dubai, to change a, an owner, it takes 4%. And for their biggest economy, if you go now in Dubai, is real estate. Because they know that is a commodity that changed from A, B to C in a, in a month's time. Because it's like a normal goods, it's transferable. So I think the government need to think on this perspective how we can uh, uh, bring it down and to make it more enhanceful. But also to du in Dubai, let's say, I want to give more practical uh, destination that we think they are our competition. Uh, in Dubai, to make a transfer, it takes you maximum two days. Okay. From uh, being uh, uh, from Tofik to Paolo, Paolo to Tofik, transfer of ownership, it takes two days. In uh, Zanzibar, it might take not one year, surely. Uh, not one year, for sure. Uh, not one uh, whatever, but uh, it is uh, what I, w I want to go to later is undefined. Okay. okay? <laughs> let's, let's, let's do work on that. It is undefined. Uh, and uh, and so this, you can't uh, plan for it. You, you don't cannot know. plan for hmm. it. And uh, just imagine now, you want to come here, you want to buy land, or you want to buy a property, you want to close a deal, pay it, move out. And now, end of the day, because of this particular aspect, you keep a lawyer. And that lawyer, end of the day, does here, there, a lot of fear stories, a lot of due diligences, because now even the due diligence, there's no authority to do that. Okay, so now you have to find a lawyer to do that. I think still there are some cubs. The good part of it now, we have gone in um, digitalization on registration. So now you don't have to depend on the particular lawyer to know that, uh, okay, who owns this particular company? You can go to the registration, do the search, and now you know who are the real owner. But this had happened thanks for this government. It has just happened in this uh, a year or two. Uh, but uh, as I said, the system is still need to be upgraded just to make sure that there are more clarity because now real estate in Zanzibar is not a transfer of homes anymore. It's a commodity like sugar, rice, or oil, or any other products, because that's what is a big bang for Zanzibar. Mm, so that's very good information that we're getting here. And I could see Victoria nodding when you're talking about the legal aspect, that it's so difficult to get a lawyer to just look into the transfer of I'm documentation. I'm sorry, it's a business, huh? <laughs> it is your business. I'm not trying to be a <laughs> your business can you make it our just tell us a little bit about that do you come across that kind of um, hurdle and how do you how do you sort of suggest you go around it do you do it in your company maybe perhaps he you, is I know very you right in everything that is said um, as much as we're making money out of it <laughs> but I can also state for a fact that's why I also stated the, the, the matter of digitalization with the uh, setup of the company right now everything is smooth but then you also need the same mechanism when it comes to real estate, when it comes to um, verifying who you're dealing with, when you, it comes to verifying who are the owners, the titles. So um, it, it is ha um, hard work, really, because everything is manual, and you have to make sure that you get written confirmation from all these authorities. Otherwise, I might end up giving advice, and then tomorrow somebody says, ah, but you didn't give me a correct advice, because uh, when you walk into uh, the same authority, you might get a whole different information on the same aspect. So uh, I, I do agree with Tofik, and that's why for me digitalization and the initiative to go digital, for me it's very exciting and I applaud um, the government for that. Mm, you applaud, is anyone else applauding the government? <laughs> is anyone else? Very good, thank you. And as you can see, where is, the, uh, okay, Austin just came behind my back and told me Doris, no, time is up because there's lots of other things on this program and we will have to end this session right now but I can tell you this tomorrow there'll be another opportunity to talk about the real estate where we'll have a dedicated session purely on real estate matters and so I will have to release my very they've got, they're willing to they've got so much to say but time doesn't allow can I give you can I give you just one more minute to wrap up and and just talk about what lessons can the rest of Africa learn from Zanzibar. Are there any lessons that the rest of Africa can learn from Zanzibar as a tourist destination? I'll st let's start this way and we'll end with the uh, I totally agree because mm -hmm. uh, I looked 20 years ago, hardly we had any tourism in Zanzibar. And what we have been able to achieve uh, as we speak, now Zanzibar is number one destination in Africa. 
So it means that we really have come very long way back where, uh, to achieve this. But uh, I strongly will dedicate this for having a very clear vision from the government, uh, but also for the people. Remind, uh, just to give a bit of knowledge that uh, historically where we have the, our background, we, have, we were very anti-tourism. And because of our cultural traditions, a lot of things, and people that thought, okay, we might be brainwash and a lot of other stories. But today, if you see Zanzibar and how we've been able to cope in tourism, how we'll be able to engage and taking this opportunity, has been phenomenal. I think it is a, a very beautiful study uh, for the rest of other destinations in Africa to learn from Zanzibar. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Honorable Mr. Rosso. Half a minute to wrap up your final thoughts? Yes, I have uh, very little to add, okay, <laughs> because it's exactly the truth. The, Zanzibar, Zanzibar, everybody has to learn, but the, it's difficult for other countries to learn because they're not Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. They don't have uh, the population, they don't have the island, they don't have the beaches and the sea that we have. So it's, it's a difficult message that uh, to pass to other destinations. This was the privilege. We are privileged of mm -hmm. that one, and we have to take ad, ad, this. We have to take this as an advantage. And we, the only things we have to try is to make sure that we do not ruin our situation which we have now. We just we just have to maintain it, okay, okay. and to improve it, but try not to ruin. Okay. Thank you very much. And Victoria, your final thoughts. And your mic is far from you. <laughs> Taking a cue from Mr. Rosso, I would say just in inclusion. O while we are opening up, um, we are doing regulatory reforms, we are opening up to the rest of Africa, just to make sure that also um, local communities included, um, uh, empowered, uh, capacities, um, um, just inclusion of the local community. Because for me, um, if there's no peace, if uh, <laughs> then yeah, if there's everything, no peace, else, everything else goes out of the exactly, window. Exactly, and it starts with your host, and the hosts are actually the local communities. No matter what uh, beauty, how beautiful the island is, if if that is not there, then yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, and maybe I could add my final thoughts to anyone who's from Zanzibar. Keep Stone Town, please do not go and modernize Stone Town. Stone Town is the whole beauty of Zanzibar. It all begins in Stone Town, the history is in Stone Town, the culture is in Stone Town. Let's keep it moving. Thank you so very much to my panelists. I have to give you a hand of applause myself. You've done a great job. What bigger picture? Let's have one group photo before we leave. Thank you, Honorable. I know we, ro we reeled you in kicking and screaming, and here you are. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause to Doris and our panel. Naomba tuwapigie makofi. Naomba tusiwabanie. Naomba tuwapigie makofi. And as they um, go down to the stage, we have, uh, from the stage, we have one last panel, which is uh, very exciting, although we're going to keep it very short. It's not going to be 30 minutes as the uh, just ended one. It's going to be less than that. I now have the pleasure to invite to the stage the Principal Secretary from the Ministry of Agriculture, Irrigation, Natural Resources, and Livestock. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together uh, for Mr. Saif Mwini. Karibu, Nomba Tumpigie Makofi. Please, um, you want to take this seat. I think this seat is designated for our principal secretaries. I would like also to invite to the stage Mr. Ikram Soraga, Managing Director, Zanzibar Permaculture. Can we put our hands together for Mr. Ikram Soraga? Thank you. Uh, we also have a lady on this uh, panel who is Miss Alice Moshi, Livelihood Coordinator, Milele Zanzibar Foundation. Karibu sana. Alice. Last but not least, and yet very important, from Tanzania Halti Culture Association, Taha. Let's put our hands together for Mr. Kasim Biwi. 
Karibu sana. We're gonna keep this session very brief, and uh, after this session, I will have uh, Najma Hussein, who is the executive director of the um, Zanzibar Women Chamber of Commerce, to do a closing remark, and then we shall all, all of us, uh, get into the buses and head to Fumba Free Economic Zone. Uh, Karibu sana for this brief session. Uh, of which I would like to start by inviting the uh, Principal Secretary to come and give us a key opening remark. Karibu. Uh, dear participants of this forum, first of all, I would like to thank you, the organizer of this forum, including Zipa, uh, Afri, Afri Zim Bank, uh, Zanzibar National Chamber of Commerce, and others. Uh, thank you, uh, panelists. Uh, for joining the, the agriculture sector uh, at, at this forum. Uh, and briefly, I would like to say that the uh, uh, agricultural sector in Zanzibar is uh, largely consisted with uh, four subsectors, uh, which include uh, agriculture itself as a, a crop, and uh, the next uh, subsector is uh, livestock. Uh, the, 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 the third one is uh, forestry. And uh, for, for, partic for, for particular for this forum, uh, we add the, the, the fourth subsector, uh, food security. Uh, and uh, before going to the, to the opportunity for, the, the, for, for these subsectors, Firstly, I would like to, to mention some highlight of progress of the agricultural sector, that uh, the agricultural sector is currently uh, contributed to the national GDP about 25%. Uh, uh, this is the data of the, of the, of the last year, 2021-2022. And uh, also the agricultural sector is uh, uh, actually contributed to the employment uh, of Zanzibaris and uh, we have uh, the, uh, ab about 40 percent direct employment but uh, around 70 percent is uh, uh, in one way or another their livelihood depend on agriculture. Uh, also the agriculture sector there is the development of new irrigation infrastructure. Currently we have around six schemes developed in Zanzibar which covers uh, 1,053 hectares. Therefore, this is an area for, for, for further investment in Zanzibar. Also, the sector, there is the existence of, uh, uh, we have a tractor workshop, which provides services, uh, uh, services to the farm of the farmers. And, uh, There is the existence about uh, about the 271 dairy cattle producing around 145,000 liters of milk uh, annually. There is also existence over uh, 37,000 hectares of virgin forestry, which could be uh, invested on ecosystem and the conservation conservation matters. And uh, le let's now go to the opportunity uh, to, to start with the, 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 the first subsector, which is agriculture or crops. And uh, for this area, uh, we, 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 can, we, can, we have opportunity of promotion of irrigation system for vegetable and the fruits produced by using a micro irrigation system, including drip irrigation technology. But yes, so you have opportunity of 
construction of assembling plant of for tractors, other farm machineries, uh, vehicles as well as motor vehicle, uh, as well as motor vehicles. And uh, also we have an opportunity for this subsector establishment of macro food agro-processing plants, uh, particularly due to the post-harvesting loss e e experience in Zanzibar. Also we have an opportunity of establishment of factory to produce and supply farm inputs such as fertilizer, pesticide, seeds, uh, and others. And uh, also we have an opportunity of investment in vanilla and the other spice farms. And uh, now there are many investors coming to Zanzibar willing to invest on vanilla and uh, spice farms. Therefore, uh, other investors are, are still invited to Zanzibar. And for the case of food security as a, a special subsector for this forum, uh, we have an opportunity for importation of staple food commodity such as rice, sugar, flour, and cooking oil together with the construction of food storage warehouse. Uh, currently, we have uh, uh, on the process of uh, constructing two warehouses, one in Pemba and one in Unguja, but uh, uh, interested investors are still are invited to, to invest in on, on the establishment of warehouse for the storage of food as well as the storage of uh, pro produce agricultural products. And also for food security, we have uh, an opportunity of investing in micro value added or food processing industry to target local and tourism as well as uh, in Zanzibar as well as in, in for East Africa market. And for the case of livestock, uh, we have an opportunity of uh, uh, investment in po poultry farming, including broilers and layer, and heater installation to increase the supply of domestic produced chicken and the chicken product. Also, we have an opportunity of establishment of animal feeds meal to produce and supply animal fodder. Also, we have investment in micro processing plant to meet the need of the growing market of tourism industry in Zanzibar. And uh, finally, for the case of forest, uh, as you know, we have around 37,000 hectares in Zanzibar are still virgin. We have forest, but still uh, we, 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 we need the investors to, to invest on ecosystem and conservation of our forest. Uh, therefore, <coughs> the opportunity for, 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 for this subsector is the establishment of ecotourism hotels, restaurants, and lodges around the virgin forestry protected area to meet the demand of the growing tourism industry uh, in Zanzibar. Also, we have uh, an opportunity of uh, investing on beekeeping initiative to supply honey uh, within, within Zanzibar as well as outside Zanzibar. As you know, in our forestry, there is an opportunity of, uh, of uh, uh, doing beekeeping activities. And uh, for instance, we have two associations dealing with the beekeeping, one in Zanzibar and uh, in Unguja and the other one in Pemba. As you know, honey is food, honey is uh, medicine, but honey is also uh, an economy because uh, when we invest on, on, bee, on, on beekeeping, there is an income could be obtained. And uh, the last opportunity for the forestry subsector is investing in carbon training business. And currently, Zanzibar, we are completing uh, development of the regulation uh, so as to coordinate and to supervise properly the business of carbon in Zanzibar. Therefore, we are inviting uh, interested investors to invest on carbon trading in Zanzibar uh, based on our, on our forest reserve we have. Uh, for these uh, brief remarks, uh, I would like to say thank you. And uh, now, moderator, I provide the <laughs>
you, I provide the, the hand to you to, to proceed with the uh, uh, discussion. Thank, Thank you. you very much. A big round of applause to the Principal Secretary, Mr. Saif Mwini from the Ministry of Agriculture, Irrigation, uh, Natural Resources, and Livestock. Um, I'm sure, uh, uh, Honorable uh, Principal Secretary, given more time uh, to have prepared your presentation, you could have also spoken a little more on the natural resources as you have, especially in agriculture sector. But uh, truly, we have uh, uh, scarce time. But we also have you to continue to engage and interact with you. Distinguished case, um, as I said, I'm left with seven minutes. And my panelists will all have uh, the opportunity to, one, say what they do. And as they say what they do, um, I would kindly request you all to say why should anyone, and by anyone I mean anyone present and those uh, participating virtually, uh, should they come to invest in Zanzibar? So I'm, ha I'm hoping to uh, hear from you some of the testimonies from the work you do and uh, positioning or showcasing Zanzibar as an investment uh, destination. Nomba nianze na webu wanakasim biwi kutoka... Tanzania Hot Culture Association, Taha. Um, what does Taha do? Uh, and uh, why should investors keenly put their resources in horticulture here in Zanzibar? Uh, good, good afternoon, gentlemen good afternoon. and ladies. Um, Taha came to Zanzibar uh, specifically to work with uh, the community and it included mostly young people and those who are youth and uh, also women together. The reason for Taha coming to Zanzibar was that, uh, as mentioned earlier, tourism has been a great uh, innovation of getting money in Zanzibar. So it, it appeared at that time that most of the food, particularly fruits, vegetables, and spices were coming from um, mainland and in some other places. So um, we started training people in order to produce and at the same time uh, be able to create work for themselves. So together with some other uh, partners, including the Minister of Agriculture, we set and trained those young men and women um, to take vegetable growing and spices well as well as fruit in order to earn money and at the same time um, improve their livelihood and also help the government uh, so that people can employ themselves. That's the reason why we have been here. Since we came um, in Zanzibar in 2012, we have been working very hard, and in fact, in so doing, we found that the challenge was the um, capacity. So we had to build capacity for our young people and also uh, other communities in order to be able um, to work um, hard and also to work correctly so that they could produce their um, whatever they were planting. This um, helped young people as well as the, um, those who are taking up um, the um, vegetable growing and then uh, 
we found that um, we have found that the, the amount of uh, um, vegetables coming from Zamlele reduced from 80 percent and now it's about 40 percent and at the same time because uh, f uh, vegetables and fruits are uh, ones cro uh, are the crop which are easier to grow and at the same time uh, give money in short time so it has been well taken by many of the farmers at the moment among the things which you have you had to do very strictly was to have to have to, to, to train them to, to produce quality uh, products so that they are uh, they are accepted by those many hotels that are here in Zanzibar mr. Biwi um, thank you very much for that uh, very uh, clear opening statement from Taha and uh, the association that you've, you've used, the training um, and the capacity building that you invested on towards improving quality. Um, Alice uh, Moshi, as a livelihood coordinator, we are looking on to improving food security. We are looking on to agricultural pro uh, productivity and expanding agribusiness opportunities in Zanzibar. You also have been in Zanzibar equally longer, like Ta has, or probably more. Um, Ta has been here for the past 10 years now. Um, as we are discussing um, uh, trade and investment forum in Zanzibar, showcasing Zanzibar as a destination for investment, what is your take? Why should investors come to Zanzibar? Um, giving um, vivid examples as uh, the uh, principal secretary said, currently a quarter of the GDP comes from agriculture. Why should everyone or anyone bother at all to focus on this cake? Okay, thank you very much, Austin. Uh, my name is Alice. I'm working with Mirele Zanzibar Foundation. And the Mirele Zanzibar Foundation is a local NGO. And we have eight years now since we came 2014. And Mirele is focused on blue economy and the green economy. So today I will explain on the green economy. In the green economy, we do uh, four components. One component we focus on capacity building. We empower farmers uh, on different skills, soft skills and technical skills on good agriculture practice in order to increase production. And also we link farmers to the market. And as you know, uh, Zanzibar, we have a tourism market. Uh, 70 to 75 percent of the food are coming outside the uh, Zanzibar. So we just link them to the market, and I take this opportunity to invite investors to come to Zanzibar to invest uh, in agriculture to increase production. We have market, market is there. We have tourism market and we have a local market because we the population here is 1.8 so we need to feed people all people need to eat so we do that and then uh, we link our farmers to the finance uh, f the problem of the farmers they don't have capital so we link them to the microfinance and we train them on a uh, finance scheme like village and saving where they do saving and loaning so that to improve uh, their production and then, because we are focusing on uh, organic farming, so we do advocacy and promotion to promote uh, people they know that uh, organic is impossible. So I take this opportunity to invite people to come to invest in organic because organic is possible. Uh, if we work together, we can uh, move to 100% uh, organic in Zanzibar. It is possible. So I'll take this opportunity, Austin, to say, uh, uh, investor they can come here because we have political stabilities we have tourism market so they can come and invest to increase the production food security but they can invest in organic farming for our safety for our future uh, generation also thank you very much 70 percent of uh, food that is being consumed in Zanzibar is imported this is a gray area, looking on to 600 plus hotels that we have, looking on to the projection of more than 800,000 tourists target that we have as a country. Uh, there is truly a gray area. But again, um, Alice has uh, emphasized 
on organic agriculture, which is friendly to um, our health, and this is the direction to go. But I also would like to reiterate the fact that the president, uh, which the PS should have said as well, the president of Zanzibar is very pro-organic. So coming to invest in agriculture, especially in the areas of organic agriculture, uh, definitely is, the heart, um, is at the heart of the, uh, the head of state and hence the support, which uh, the PS will probably comment as we come towards the end of the session. Um, Ikram, um, uh, Zanzibar permaculture, you've, you've also been doing a lot of training, a lot of capacity building to as far as uh, the, the uh, um, organic agriculture is concerned, to as far as good practices in agriculture. Um, we've not tapped. For me, I look at Zanzibar as really untapped market to um, establishing any form of businesses. Maybe you want to tell us now, um, the investors who are here um, listening and you have, the, you have the couple of minutes to tell them why, again, um, emphasizing the, the, the potential of agriculture in Zanzibar. Why should they come and um, uh, invest in Zanzibar? Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, before we go anywhere, Austin Alos, I would like to uh, declare interest as well. Um, as the Practical Permaculture Institute, um, we are all about sustainable agriculture. And when we're talking about sustainable agriculture, mostly we're talking about organic agriculture, sustainable for, for ourselves, but also for, for the future generations. Now, I um, think as many of the other previous uh, panelists have try to re reiterate, um, Zanzibar is more than just a sand and ocean destination. Uh, Zanzibar has so much more, more to offer than just its beaches. Um, Alice here has mentioned it very well. Locally, 80% of the food is coming from, from outside. So that in itself is an opportunity. But um, also looking in terms of export, what could Zanzibar offer uh, in terms of exportation as well, there is, I think there's something there to, to give. Um, we are known as the, the Spice Islands. Zanzibar already has that kind of brand out there. And I believe uh, if we have investors who would focus in the niche organic um, market and exporting uh, organic products, um, rebranding Zanzibar to be known as a destination um, that could be like these organic islands as well. I know a lot of tourists um, love and organic is kind of trending even uh, in the world right now. Everybody is sourcing for organic food. It's not only healthy, but a lot of benefits that come from that. So I, I believe with the right rebranding, with the right, right type of investors, there is a huge opportunity for the agriculture sector um, to provide not only for the, for the gap that is locally, but also in terms of, in terms of exporting. Uh, food, essential oils from the spices that um, are world renowned in Zanzibar and the likes. Thank you. Thank you very much. You speak of spices across the globe, you will certainly find Zanzibar on the top rank. This is, this is a very great opportunity and to reiterate the statements that were made by the PS earlier that we have, uh, we have more than 37,000 hectares of forests um, in Zanzibar. And um, just to, just to uh, add, um, this is the statistics from the mainland. Maybe, P.S., you can update on what is transpiring in Zanzibar. But the fourth contributor to GDP on the mainland uh, is uh, the forest harvests. Okay? And uh, this is such a big number. Um, do not know about uh, Zanzibar. P.S., as you wrap up this session, I wish we really had more time to speak about agriculture because, you know, being able to attend here, being able to be here, we all have come from lunch, which is a product of agriculture. Uh, we are all part and parcel trapped in the agricultural value chain. To wrap up, the investors are giving you their heart and mind, their attention to listen to you. Maybe you can mention one or two or three incentives that the ministry has in promoting agriculture, in promoting Zanzibar as an agricultural destination for investment. Karibu Katibu Mku. Uh, 
thank you moderator i think the 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 first the first point to to comment is uh, uh, is to to increase our effort toward the the irrigation irrigation point of view as you know rainfield agriculture is uh, is not a guarantee uh, sometime rain season but uh, the rain could be disappeared. Therefore, the first, the, the first area is to, to increase our effort to invest on irrigation uh, farming. And as you know, uh, we, we, have, we have about 80,000 old hectares of irrigation infrastructure, and currently we have uh, new, new, new uh, areas, new developed areas, about uh, 1,053. And uh, this is including uh, the six schemes, uh, five in Unguja, Cheju, Kilombero, uh, Kinyasini, Chehani, and uh, yes, and uh, I, th I think Kibokwa, and the one in Pemba is in Lemele. Therefore, the, the, the government effort to increase the production of rice so as to, to fulfill uh, the issue of food security is to focus on irrigation uh, farming. Uh, the second one is uh, to increase our effort toward the availability of uh, uh, agricultural inputs. And uh, when we say agricultural inputs include fertilizer, include pesticide, include insecticide, include seeds, and uh, th therefore w when we have uh, agricultural input appropriately, that means we, we probability of increasing the production is, is very high. And actually this is a big challenge to farmers. Uh, Any time when you go to farmers anywhere, the issue is uh, agricultural inputs. Therefore this is an area for attention. And the third one, I think, is to go to the forest. As I said earlier, uh, forestry actually is an area of uh, uh, moving Zanzibar from one place to, uh, to another in terms of development. We have forestry, uh, we, we could invest in ecosystem uh, point of view, but we have uh, issue of beekeeping, and now actually, uh, Zanzibaris are open, opening now on on the on the on the fruitful of honey because, as you know, as I said before, that honey is uh, is uh, is food, but honey is medicine, but honey is the economy. And uh, uh, fortunately, Zanzibar has been recognized international that uh, we produce uh, uh, organic honey, which is good even for the the international market and even in, in, in our hotels. That is, I think, is a, a four, three point. Thank you. Yes, um, P.S., as, as you wrap up and kindly wrap up on behalf of us all, just tell the investors, if, if they want to come to invest in, in agriculture or in the sector, in the agricultural sector, what are some of the incentives? What, what can they expect that the ministry will facilitate on their behalf as they come to invest? Uh, fortunately, Ministry of Agriculture, we're working together with the all uh, institutions uh, which deals with uh, uh, investment promotion Zanzibar. Therefore, we are working together with Zipa, where actually, as uh, uh, DG at the morning said, there is an incentive environment for investors. But we work together with all other sectors communication, uh, transport, tourism sector. Therefore, what is available on, on other, other, other institutions are the same for, 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 for the agricultural sector. But what I mean, we, we have learned. And uh, the other opportunity, uh, we have research institutions. For instance, in, in our uh, ministry, we have two research institutions. The one is a research institution for crop called Zari, and the other research institutions is for 
uh, livestock research. Uh, therefore, uh, it is an area also to invest in because research is a base for ensuring we we, we we going to the right path to the to the increased production. And uh, before before <laughs> before you informing me to 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 end. Just I wanted to comment from the, 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 the morning session today, where the speaker from the African Bank, he said that uh, uh, they intend to support industrial parks, three industrial parks in Tanzania, including one in Zanzibar, the another one in, in Unguja, Pemba, and Dodoma. Uh, just I appreciate this, uh, this statement but uh, I, I would like to, to comment that uh, Minister of Agriculture, we have two, uh, two exhibition centers. I, I, I could say two national exhibition centers in Zanzibar, or areas. The one in Pemba and the, two, and the one in Yunguja. We have an area. In Yunguja, we have Dole, about 9.4 hectares. We have the area. We have the land, and uh, in Pemba we have Chamanangwe, uh, where also the industrial park are available in Pemba, and the the land area is uh, around 80.4 hectares. What I want to say, maybe the bank, uh, if you already focus on supporting uh, the establishment or development of this industrial park. And uh, I, 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 I try to commend, maybe also to look at the investment on, on these exhibition centers because uh, uh, actually we have to have a fixed infra infrastructure. Instead now when we, we have exhibition to go with the tents and in Pemba to transport a tent from Unguja, from Tanzania mainland and other equipment required. But we wanted to have a fixed uh, uh, exhibition center, therefore, when we, we want to go, therefore, the, the structure to be, to be there. Therefore, this is a kind of request to, to the bank. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Please, let's put our hands together for my panelists. As we've come to the end of the panel discussion, it's unfortunate we still had a lot to say when it comes to the aspects of uh, food security productivity and agribusiness opportunities in Zanzibar, the, the opportunities are a mass. When you speak about blue economy, when you speak about hospitality, you can't miss to speak about um, food, and especially as we head towards the direction of organic foods. So on behalf of all of us here, P.S., uh, thank you very much. My panelists, Ikram, Alice, and uh, Buana Kasim, thank you very much for your contribution. We are the champions, we are the pioneers of investment in agriculture for Zanzibar. So thank you. Please let's put our hands together once again. Let's stand up. We'll take a group picture. And then um, may I now invite um, the executive director of uh, Zanzibar Women Chamber of Commerce to come and do the closing remark. Asante sana, please let's take our seats. Asante sana, well done. Nashukuru sana. Bwana katibu mkuu, asante sana. Ikram, kudos, asante sana. Tunaheshima kubwa sasa kukupa nafasi. Bibi Najma, Executive Director, um, for your closing remarks. Karibu sana. And she's making these closing remarks on behalf of uh, the organizers, Mr. Ali Amur, who is the chairman Zanzibar National Chamber of Commerce. Karibu Binajma. Asante. Government officials, investors, ladies and gentlemen, protocol observed. Good evening to you all. As I've already been introduced, my name is Najma Hussain, Executive Director of Zanzibar Women Chamber of Commerce but also a board member of Zanzibar National Chamber of Commerce. That's precisely why I'm here. And I'm also a consultant on administration and management for investors in Zanzibar. I'm standing here on behalf of 
Mr. Ali Amour, our chairman at Zanzibar National Chamber of Commerce, who had to travel this afternoon for another interesting commitment. First of all, let us thank the Almighty God for blessing this event today, which now comes at the adjoining point while we are all still well, healthy, and happy. But I would also like to thank you, the participants and exhibitors, both from Zanzibar and Tanzania mainland, and the rest of the world for your decision to be part of this historical event, for your engagement with other participants and stakeholders that made the conference very meaningful. Without you, this would just be an empty hall with no meaning at all. So please accept our utmost appreciation for your participation. We hope coming all the way Zanzibar has given you a reward now or will do so in the, in the near future through your contacts, new possible ventures and new business investments potentials. Dear participants, it may believe that today even has been a very fruitful one. It has been rich in contact, the opening session and the three panel of course discussion have elevated our understanding of different business investment opportunity in Zanzibar around the economic growth of the country as much as they create more jobs and growth for businesses. The session have also presented financing opportunity that await investors, hence connecting the financial demanding and supply. For that reason, I would not like to take you through another potentials as I know you have had enough to digest today. However, as we are winding up, I urge you all to make most of your time here in Zanzibar by visiting our tourist attraction sites, which are abundant. And of course, I've heard you're going to have your, uh, a view with uh, Fumba Town. I believe you're going to enjoy it. The good thing about Zanzibar, that wherever you are in the island, as said before, there must be something attractive for you as in a visitor, but also as an investor to see the opportunity. So please enjoy every moment while you are here. After the few remarks, uh, I, thank you, uh, I thank you all once again, and of those who are colleagues who will continue with uh, sessions tomorrow, I wish you all the very best of luck. Thank you very much all. Asante Najma. Uh, Hussein, Executive Director, Zanzibar Women Chamber of Commerce. Very powerful um, young lady, a woman um, that we've had in the session. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of the session. The program tomorrow commences at 9. So let's try to be here by 8.30, quarter to 9. Um, the buses are outside for all of us, not some of us, not speakers, but all of us, to go and see uh, the Fumba uh, free economic zone. This is an area where it's been set aside to attract and welcome investors and see the potential that this area has and see if we are able also, whether you're a local, you're a foreigner, to come and invest in these given areas. So I would like all of us not to miss this golden opportunity. Um, the buses outside, as I mentioned earlier, for all of us, all of us to uh, take this field trip. Without further ado, Niwa Shukuru Sana, thank you all very much for your patience. Um, and I wish you all a very fruitful evening. Let's continue to engage. Let's continue to network. Let's make Trade and Investment Forum 2022 a different one, a special one. And um, I wish you all a very good evening. So let's head now to the buses. We meet tomorrow, 8.30, quarter to 9, ready to begin the day. Asante Sana. <laughs>